In this task, we will explore the effects of various projections on the characteristics of a map. We will focus primarily on shape and area distortions. We will examine projections useful for mapping on the global scale. So first, open QGIS Desktop 2.2.0, as you see I have done here. And we want to open up the World View QGIS Project by clicking Project, Open, and choosing World View from the Lab Directory. And you're going to see this map here. Um, in the project file, there are two polygon themes, circles and land, a point theme, cities, and a line theme, Graticule. If these circles are displayed on a globe, they would be perfect circles. Here you can begin to visualize the distortion in the projection by the distortion in the circles theme. On this map, a projection has not been chosen in QGIS Desktop. The software is using a latitude and longitude measured in geodetic decimal degrees, which displays a simple rectangular coordinate system in which the length of one degree of longitude is consistently equal to one degree of latitude. In QGIS Desktop, when a projection has not yet been selected, distance calculations remain true since the software computes distances using the spherical coordinates of latitude and longitude along a great circle arc, just as if you were actually measuring at the Earth's surface. Although a projection has not yet been chosen by the user, the display is essentially a plate career pr projection. On a projection that preserves shape, the polygons on the circles theme appear appears true circles. In a plate career projection, linear scale, area, and shape are all distorted increasingly towards the poles as demonstrated with the circles theme. The circles will be used in this exercise for illustrating the aerial and shape distortion that occurs with various projections. While this method does not actually quantify the distortion as does Tissot's Indicatrix, it does show visually the skewing, tearing, and shearing that occurs with certain projections. So with all that said, first we're going to examine the map units and distance units set for this unprojected map. So from the menu bar, select Project, Project Properties. And then click the CRS tab, CRS standing for Coordinate Reference System. And so notice that the selected coordinate re uh, reference system is set to WGS84, which is an unprojected coordinate system. So let's click Cancel to dismiss the dialog. And so now let's do some distance measurements on this map for later comparison of maps in which a projection is set. So I'm going to click on the uh, Measure Line tool in the Attributes toolbar. And currently this tool uh, is in uh, uh, metric only, um, and so uh, you'll just have to do conversions if you, if you want to see it in different units. And so I'm going to click on the start symbol for Atlanta, and then I'm going to click on Alice Springs, Australia, and I'm going to right click on that to end the line. And so you can see that in the display box that popped up here, we're seeing it all in metric. So in the segments, we're seeing it in meters, and in the total, we're seeing it in kilometers. And it measures about 25,100 kilometers, and your distance may vary slightly depending on where you clicked. This is not the actual distance between Atlanta and Alice Springs. Since on-the-fly CRS transformation is turned off, Q just measures directly between Atlanta and Alice Springs along your measured line heading east from Atlanta. What it should do is measure to Alice Springs by heading west from Atlanta instead of east, as you def um, since you know heading west is a shorter distance than heading east. However, Q just doesn't know that the world is round, so to speak, since on-the-fly projection is turned off. With on-the-fly turned on, it treats the coordinate system as a world-based coordinate system, and uh, this view does not maintain spherical distance measurements and distorts shape, directions, and area. <clears throat> so let's tell QGIS that we are in fact working with a world-based coordinate system and wish to measure on a round world. So again, we're going to go back to the project properties. So I'm going to click project, project properties. I'm going to click the CRS tab, and I'm going to go ahead and close the measure distance here. Oops, uh, measure tool to get it out of my way. And I'm going to check Enable On-The-Fly CRS Transformation. And I'm going to select WGS84 from the CRS list. I'm going to click OK to view the map. And now I'm going to reuse the measure tool to measure the distance between Atlanta and Alice Springs. And again, I'm going to right click to finish the, uh, to finish the measurement. So the measured distance is about 16,100 kilometers. So again, your distance is going to vary. So this is the actual, well, close enough distance based on our choosing of the two ends of the measured line, um, distance between Atlanta and Alice Springs. This view maintains spherical distance measurements but distorts shape, direction, and area. So let's change the projection on this view to the Mercator projection. 
So once again, I'm going to open up the project properties and go to the CRS tab. And this time I'm going to filter by the EPSG code, so 3395, which is the World Mercator uh, coordinate reference system. I'm going to select it and then hit OK. And now we're going to see a slightly different map. You can see that it's getting skewed uh, towards the poles. Now one thing to note, if I zoom out to full, you're going to see this kind of bizarre um, I guess triangle show up here. Uh, this is because we have on the fly projection selected which isn't always perfect and you may see some artifacts like this um, and so the best way to avoid this would be actually to save out all these uh, GIS layers to the uh, Mercator projection to avoid that so I would right click to um, save as and I would <clears throat> save it as the project CRS Right, and then that would then um, convert it from WGS84 to World, Mer uh, World Mercator, and I would avoid that uh, issue. But we're going to go ahead as if everything was okay. Um, okay, so the, this Mercator projection is a conformal projection, except to the poles, and adds straight meridians and parallels that intersect at right angles. Scale is truest along the equator and becomes more distorted at higher latitudes, as evidenced by the increasing size of the circles. The Mercator was designed for marine navigation and gives all straight lines of the map as lines of constant compass bearing, which is quite useful when you're going from A to B over long distances. For global scale thematic maps, however, the Mercator has too much aerial distortion for accurate use. So the Mercator is best for larger scale projections of areas at low latitude. Small scale maps have much distortion of area and distance. The Mercator map is much less desirable for mapping continents and other projections as it has significant distortion and can promote geographical misconceptions. In general, rectangular maps are not recommended for use in mapping the world. Equivalency, which is the pro property of equal area, and conformality are best preserved, are better preserved using non-rectangular maps. Task 2 is going to examine a map projection more suitable for mapping the world.